Hey, hey, everybody, it's time for some ZX Spectrum paraphernalia. And this is a DK Tronics light pen interface. And I'm going to be showing you this in a future video because I found myself all of a sudden with a whole bunch of DK Tronics accessories. Uh, two of them are light pens, um, slightly different, but basically the same. They work with the same software. And um, an audio capture card. So I'm going to do that as well as that the Rombo video capture card that was very kindly donated. And that has a whole video on it by itself basically underway because it's such a neat old thing. So the first thing I want to do is clean this wire because it had some polystyrene etch into it and I'm not sure how salvageable that is. I'm not too worried about it because we can replace all of this. There's not much to it. So what DK Tronics did, and I can tell <laughs> by looking at these, I think they just ordered a whole bunch of pens with their logos on them, the same way you might order a bunch of Bix for your company, you know, corporate purchase. And whether or not they came with the cartridges, I don't know, but basically the internals have been gutted from the pen. And it looks very much like a photodiode has been shoved up the end. Uh, looks very similar to an infrared LED, that kind of packaging. So I'm not quite sure if it is a, an emissive device or if it's if it's a genuine photodiode or if, if um, infrared LEDs have some sort of, um, I guess, can receive the, the signals from the screen. But that's got rid of the stickiness at least. It's not as bad as a, a Chinny's Amstrad PDA thing. Those were super sticky. And I can't remember the name of these pens, but if you look closely, you can see these are really common. They used to have a, a, a nice cap on them, and the end was exactly like this. I remember chewing up many of these. It's kind of a shame they don't come with a cap, but I guess you probably wouldn't need one. I will dismantle this ever so slightly just to show you that diode I was telling you about. So you can see it is very LED-like. See if it can come out a bit. Yeah, oh, maybe. Don't want to force it too much. I think they probably put a knot in the end of the wire. Try to force a bit more wire in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ho, ho, ho. And that's all there is to it, really. It's just literally the LED. I don't suppose there's anything underneath that. And if there would be, it would probably just be a resistor or something. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's nothing under that heat shrink. And then on the other end is a very simple mono jack. Let's see if we can get this back in. Yes, we can. Very simple mono jack. Yep, yeah, there's nothing to that. So that part you can make all day long. You can recreate that part. I'm interested though about this part because DK Tronic seems to have used the same plastic shell for nearly everything they make, which is cool. And we'll have a look inside. Again, this is the sort of thing that I think was relatively obtainable. When I went on eBay looking at these things, they were relatively obtainable. And again, eBay being eBay, I'm basically bid. Um, I kind of paid too much for one set that didn't have a um, any. Uh, <laughs> it was basically one set came with a tape. It was the pen, the cartridge, and a tape. One set came with a box and the manual, and then between the bunch of them, I managed to get a whole working set. So that's it. If I'd paid slightly more, I would have been able to buy one that was boxed with the entire set. So it's that kind of thing. You probably get them for around a tenner if you look hard enough. And there really isn't much there. Let's have a zoom in. Mega simple. And if you can get hold of one of these connectors, you could probably just build this yourself. So you have a buffer chip, uh, which could be tricky to get hold of. I don't think they make these anymore. You might be able to find an equivalent. But if uh, anybody at home would like to comment on the SN74LS125AN and what a modern equivalent would be, yeah, please feel free to post that down below. And you can see you've just got some basic... Uh, resistors and electrolytic capacitor and ceramic capacitor and your another ceramic capacitor down there and of course your headphone jack and if we flip it over look you can copy the circuit there there's your power rail going through a capacitor and this must be your ground coming through and there you go not much to it the thing that makes this work of course is the software and that is something you definitely would need to get hold of if you want to try this out.
I think I'll just pop it back together and uh, hook it up to the computer to show you uh, a quick overview of it really. I don't want to go too deep in it because the software has loads of functionality but I'm sure you're curious to see what it looks like and I have to admit till today I had never experienced a light pen. It was one of those things that you'd seen in magazines but never actually had so again that's fulfilling my quest for trying all of the basic devices that I wish I could have had as a kid and saw in magazines and never did. Of course we have to load the software. You can see it's an original DK Tronics tape and I do have other DK Tronics stuff that we're going to go through soon and I might have to do some tape pirating of course on the classic JVC. Right, let's hit stop because it's finished. Now there is a calibration program. I will show you that even though it didn't happen to need calibration last time. So I pushed C and it gives you some bump about calibration and what you do, you take the pen and you touch it. See there? It says correct setting. But apparently if you wanted to you could adjust the timing so it would move this up and down and then get a bit closer. It's fine as it is. So Oops, I did push Q then instead of any other key. Right. You can actually save those settings back if you want to, but then you can go into the graphics setting. Now, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this because you might be able to see in the reflection. Hi, I'm actually holding the camera in my hand and you do need two keys, or two, two hand free. Basically, you have to hold the light pen on one of these menu options on the bottom and then hit a key. If you're using a one uh, plus two, the Spectrum Plus Two, if you hit space it exits the program which is super annoying so I just tend to push Q or something like that because that one always works. And I think they missed a trick here because rather than have to hover over one of these and then hit a key, it would be better if you could have just hit the corresponding key on the keyboard while you've got the cursor elsewhere or perhaps include a little button on the side. But anyway, I'm going to try to set up the camera on a box or something so we can do this. I know it's a bit janky, but uh, I'm using the very latest in cardboard box technology here so I can work this. So if I hit a, a, a key, any, any key literally here, you can see the cursor is redirected to where I'm holding it. But what's really cool, watch the pattern on the screen. Three, two, one. So it works out the rough area and then it halves it, then it quarters it and then it keeps going at a finer resolution until it figures out exactly where you're pointing. That is pretty groovy. And high again in the reflection, but now we've got the basics underway. I've, I've set it up so it's a bit more parallel to the screen so you can get to see exactly what's happening. See, that's that whole routine. Now, if you want to draw a, a circle, so it's got this cursor here. Now, that cursor you can move to anywhere. So if I set the crosshairs to there and hover over M, you'll see it resets that uh, crosshairs to there, the little cursor there. See it? A little reticle. Um, so, for example, if I want to draw a rectangle, I'll push R here, and it's going to draw between that point and where I last was. So there you go, I've got a little rectangle, and if I want to do the same with a circle, I'm going to move the cursor over here with the move command. And then now I'm going to say I want to come out to here, this is where my radius will be, next to this rectangle, and then I'll just do circle. And it's exactly like that, there's lots of simple functions, you can change the colours of the border, you can save to tape, you can do a flood fill. In fact, let's try that flood fill, so I'm going to go into there, and I'm just going to hit this F. Let's hope it doesn't crash. <laughs> well, hey, I have made it crash before where it'll just keep going forever and ever because it can't fill so much stuff. You can actually even, I'll show you this, right on the screen. So I'm going to say move to here, and I'm going to go to letter mode, and I'm going to type in the back office. Oh, no, I pressed edit. Oh, I might have screwed this up. Oh, it's probably just going to crash it, isn't it? How do I stop this? Oh, let's try that again. Loader, play. As you can see, we're almost all caught up to where we were before. I'm just going to do another little flood fill there. Oh no! Yeah, you'll be careful of that. 
Now you can erase if the cursor is where she yep. Phew, you still have an erase. Isn't that marvelous? This is quite sophisticated CAD here, and you can tell, of course, by the tone of my voice that I am joking. But I, I think probably back in the day, this would have been quite impressive. You, you, oh no, how did that escape? It escaped out of my circle. Let's see what happens. You might have totally ruined your drawing though, if something like that happened. And you can see here this F is flashing. Sometimes the flood fill gets caught in some sort of infinite loop. Oh no. This could be the end as well. Yeah, this is happening again. So there you have it. What can I say other than it is a bit po, because even the O that I was typed in went wrong somehow. But uh, you say it was something that would have been quite novel back in the day and let you do some sort of art, even though it's quite laborious. But that's really judging it by today's standards where you can just tap something out on your phone. And let's be frank, Microsoft Paint is a revelation or the equivalent of RM on RM Nimbus back in the day when you were at school in the UK. In fact, I don't think you have a decent paint program on a phone. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now I'll show you some of the other bits we're going to be covering. Um, so this is another pen interface. I think it's, it's exactly the same, same make, same everything. So there's probably no difference in that, although we might do a side by side. We do have an audio capture here, so you can do some audio sampling, which that should be quite interesting. Again, DKtronics. And of course, the fantabulous Rombo video capture device, which does work. I can assure you it does work. Um, but I want to tune that in a little bit. That's the ZX Spectrum version of the one we got for the Atari ST. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to not play with this anymore on the ZX Spectrum because frankly, it keeps crashing, even though it's version 4 and it's driving me nuts in favor of doing something a little bit more productive. Thanks for watching.